bands talk. We gon' watch that bands talk. Yeah, this that bands talk. Listen to that bands talk. Yeah, this that bands talk. I'm feeling like Curry, when he had the three, he had the three. I'm feeling like Ja, you can't go on me, yeah I'm a grizzly, chugging in bank, we ain't the same, you more like a Y cause you never playing, I'm feeling like Giannis when he in the paint, I'm more like Embiid, I'm bringing the pain, yeah that bands talk, playing like a starter, but we still go watch that bands talk, big stepper on the court, yeah extra steps, I been walk, girl step, hero on the heat, I'm Spike Lee, at the garden, I'm gonna always have my seat, at the bands talk, carry with the handle, I dismantle you, put up big numbers in New York like that boy Energy up. We need all the energy. We are finally here. We would like to welcome you all to Bench Talk 718, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yo, we finally here. I'm so excited. I'm with my big brothers. I'm Ty. This is Mo, and this is Va. We're so happy to be here with you guys. It's been a long time coming, and finally, we getting this thing started, right? So before we even start, got to get all the business stuff out of the way first. Before we get started, I want to make sure you shout out S Street Media. Shout out to Thank S you, S Street Media, for giving us the platform to be able to do what we do. Shout out to them. You can follow them on YouTube and Instagram. Same thing, S Street Media. We also want to give a shout out to Young Nation. Young Nation is the one who take care of all our apparel. We give it up for Twin, Melita. Thank you for your support. You're part of the team. Appreciate you. You can follow her on Instagram. That's young.nation19 on Instagram. Once again, that's young.nation19. We want to give a special shout out to AZ for that wonderful intro song. You see, we was in here bouncing to it, doing a little dance. You know, it's that bench talk. Got that bench talk. I don't want to get Definitely started. Trying to come correct. <laughs> yeah, you got to come correct when you're the bench talk, right? You can follow us, the bench talk team. Bench talk underscore 718 on Instagram. That's bench talk underscore 718. We also have a YouTube page. That's at bench talk 718. All right, so now at this part, we're going to, you know, give you a little preview of what to expect, tell you a little summary about ourselves, introduce ourselves, as you per se. Um, I'm Ty. You can find me on Instagram at TyRich underscore 90. Uh, man, I'm telling you, the excitement got me going crazy. <laughs> but first thing y'all need to know, this is, a, this is the biggest fact about me. I'm loyal. I'm a great teammate. I'm all about the team, and I'm a huge Knicks fan. <laughs> okay? I am one of the biggest Knicks fans there are. So for everybody that's going to be supporting us and showing us love, I could take it. I already know everybody wants to say the Knicks suck, all this other stuff. It doesn't really matter to me, all right? Oh, it's coming. <laughs> oh, it's going to come. I know. People are going to have a lot to say, but it's always Knicks tape over here, all right? So with that being said, I'm biased as well. So just know, yeah. Todd's not going to be truthful about that. He might be quiet okay. during that moment, mm-hmm. or he's going to talk some other nonsense. But especially when it comes to that, you got something to say? I got something for you. All right? So pretty much I'm appreciative for being a part of this team, this bench talk team. LeVar, the architect, thank you. Mo, my brother, my big brother's right here. And I just can't wait to get started. I'm going to just let somebody else talk. Right. Now we're going <laughs> to slide over to Mo. Nah, what's up? What's up? What up, y'all? What up, world? Like he's, like Ty said, piggyback off him. My name is Mo. Y'all can follow me on Instagram, Mo Obama, like Obama, with just with the Mo, M O B A M A. Once again, follow the page, Ben Chalk underscore seven one eight. I'm here with my blood brother, Lavar, same mother, same father, and my brother from another Ty. You know, appreciative to y'all, appreciative S Street Media once again. And um, y'all see us in here, you know, uniform like we play sports. We all got in the same shirt, our apparel, Bench Talk. But um, what Bench Talk means to me is like. It could be a microcosm of sports. It could be the bench in your neighborhood. Wherever you get together with your friends, family, whoever, and talk your shit, man. Like, 
You got a bottle of Hennessy. I mean, whatever you drink, whatever's your vice or whatever you're out there talking about this and that. And that's what's important to me. You know, I'll be online. I'll be on Instagram. I'll be on Facebook talking all the time about sports. So, you know, why not get together and do it with people you love who got a knack and a lot of knowledge about the game? And me personally, I played. Was it the best? Or was it the worst? Neither. And um, I would say one of my traits is sharing. And I think people who play with me would say the same thing. So I'm just sharing in another aspect, you know, giving it back to the world, paying it forward. And um, like I said, I like to share. So I'm going to bounce it over to my bro, Vaughn, my brother, Vaughn. Pass it to you. Let him hear what he got to say. What up, what up, what up, world? It's Vaughn kicking in. Just want to say thank you, S3 Media, for the platform. We've been in the crib so many times on the park or around the way just talking about a basketball podcast. But one... We came and met the first time. I want to let everybody out there know it's not a podcast. This is a show. This is a way of life. This is a brand. And we mean this. We heavy into this. And we're going to pour everything we have into it. So um, if you're out there, you're watching, you support us. We love y'all. And the brand is just going to grow. This is the first of many. And like I said, we're just happy to be here, man. But when we, when we came up with the name Bench Talk, right, the bench is a part of the urban culture, right? Every hood has a bench. If you want to find out what's going on, the current events, your daily news, and your news that you go to that bench. Every hood has one. Bree Boy, stand up. Marcy, stand up. Williamsburg, stand up. I'm showing my Brooklyn bias, but that's where I'm from. That's where we're from. Big Every- Brooklyn, shout out to Starry City. <laughs> Sleep City in the building. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every hood has a bench. Kingsborough, step up. Everybody. So if you want to know what's going on, so with Bench Talk, with us, our platform, we're talking about sports. You want to find out who got their ass bust, who got killed, who was killing, who had 20, who had 30, you go into that bench. You want to find out who, you know, who got the freshest gear, who fly, you playing some cards, you playing spades, whatever you playing, you go into the bench as a part of the culture. So, and we put that 7-1 in on there because that's our Brooklyn stamp. And that's what we repping, so I just want to let y'all know we here. Um, and like Mo said, his, one of his great traits was sharing, you know. And I feel like one of mine's um, on this team, we're all leaders, but I feel like I'm the big bro right here, and I'm going to I'm gonna leave my young dogs. And they hungry and they thirsty. And we got some funny cats here, man. We done played this out. We've been at restaurants, bars, just chilling, breaking day, talking about sports. So you're going to see what we all about here, man. Um, I got Ty, Ty Rich. He's a great dude, funny guy. And everybody who know Mo know he ain't reserved. So you're going to see all of that, too. So um, <laughs> if y'all want to link with me, I'm at, I'm at uh, on IG at VuFolk, V-U-F-O-L-K. Um... We all play ball, you know. We'll get to that in another show. But ball is a way of life. I want to thank my brother Sharon and Chad for putting the ball in my in my in the cradle, you know, in the cradle since six, seven years old. Follow my brother's footsteps, man. So thank y'all. Shout out to all y'all. I'm gonna always keep it a buck. Folks, family, stand up. And um, you'll see on the show we don't have we don't have friends. We have family. So when we do have guests up here, better best believe it's family, man. And I mean that. Everybody from a leader who did the great gear with us. We had AZ. It was a call through a friend and link. Song is done in two days. Not even two days. And you're going to hear that. You're going to hear that throughout. Great song. We're going to promote y'all. We're going to show love. That's what we do. So with that being said, you know, that's our first quarter. So every basketball game, when you're in the pros, it's not the little leagues. We ain't doing two halves. It's the pros. Every game got four quarters, and you just got hit with the first one. Shout out to our architect. That's the architect right there, y'all. Make it all come together. That's the reason why we're here. The architect. So now we're going to transition into the second quarter, y'all. Second quarter, for us, we went with our NBA predictions of the season. So, without further ado, I'll let you know where I stand. Coming right up with you. Follow the page, Bench Talk 718. Bench Talk 718. If you ain't here at the first 17 times, you're going to hear it the 18th time. Follow Bench Talk 718. Or you can follow Obama, Ty Rich, or Vufo. <laughs> All through the show. Mm-hmm. Once again, that's mm-hmm. Bench Talk underscore 718. I don't want nobody saying appreciate they can't you, find appreciate us. Appreciate you. I got you, brother. That's why we're a team. <laughs> bench Talk <laughs> underscore <laughs> 718 on Instagram. There's a the little things that count. So, without further ado, I'm going to go into my predictions, right? I was kind of up in the air with my MVP for the year, right? Um, I put Luca because I feel like he's been balling, he's special, he's a talent. He's a killer, um, and I think it's his time. But that little light-skinned boy out in the Bay, man, I'm not the biggest Curry fan, but I'm not a hater. 
That boy is special. When he put on, everybody always said Kerry was a part of a team concept, right? But you've seen him get 40. You've seen him get 50. You've seen the selfish part of him. And that's what I like. So I'm up in the air. I know this is episode one. I'm saying Luca, but I like the light-skinned boy out in the bay, man. Y'all know I am the biggest Kyrie Irving fan in the world. That's my Shout bias. Shout out to Kyrie. I'm fucking with Kyrie. Yes. Oh, that's a whole other topic. A whole other topic. I'm going to stay on the point. I'm stay on point. <laughs> So my most improved player, I don't know if this guy could really improve because he's already an all-star. I'm going with Donovan Mitchell. Um, mm. I like the move to, to the Cavs. I didn't know how it was going to work, but I feel like I'm picking him as my most improved because you could possibly see the Cavs in the Eastern Conference Finals. They have all the pieces in place. He's a killer. And if he leaves the team to the Eastern Conference Finals, I see a big accolades behind his name. My sixth man of the year is in a starter role right now. I'm going with Cameron Payne out with the Phoenix Suns. Chris Paul being hurt. He's stepping up. He's balling, looking like he fit. I only thought the boy could dance when he was an OKC. Tell you the truth. I didn't know he could. Yeah. And handshakes. <laughs> he had the best handshakes and dance moves in the NBA. <laughs> but now that he, man, and I want to say this. We all look at the game and we say people are like, yo, he's whack. No, there's nobody in the NBA that's whack. There's about 230. I don't know how many jobs in there, and these are the best people in the world. So shout out to all those guys who made it. We don't know what they had to go through to get there, but shout out to all those guys, man. So next, I'm coming up with my rookie of the year. Um, big college guy. I'm not a Duke fan. I will let you guys know that. But the boy Paolo Banchero out in Orlando, I feel like you see big things coming. But to me, he's a bigger version of Grant Hill. Um, I know he's not more of a point guard, but he's he's special. So I'm going with Ben Cheryl for my rookie of the year. And then we went with the, our um, Eastern Conference votes. I'm a little torn, so I told you I'm, I'm biased. I'm going with the Nets. But I also like those boys out in the bean town. So we'll see what the Celtics do. Oh, man. <laughs> All picks is subject to change. Weekly basis injuries. You know, we reserve the right to change our picks. The Nets ain't getting there. I'm not. I'm staying pat on Kyrie, though. That's not changing. <laughs> in the West. I got the Warriors. Um, say what you want. They know how to win until somebody knocked them down. I'm not a Golden State fan, but I respect what they do day in, day out. They built their team from the draft. They build from the ground up. Until somebody knocked them boys off the stool, I'm rocking with the Warriors. And then for my champs, ah, man. <laughs> I got the Brooklyn Nets as my uh, champs, man. Oh, if Brooklyn Bias was a person... I Starting wait off, if bias was a person, Brooklyn right? Jesus, <laughs> we're gonna remember this day. You said the Brooklyn Nets win the championship. If not the little light skinned boys in Golden State. All right, then in my sleeper team for the year, I'm going with the Cavs. And my breakout perform, I got the boy Anthony Simmons out in Portland. I feel like he got the big contract. He's gonna live up to. I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna live up to that, but I feel like he's in a he's in the right role with Dane being hurt. I feel like he's in a breakout performer role. That's what's up. That's a nice pick right there. I like that pick. That's not bad. That's not bad. Remember to follow us at Bench Talk underscore seven one eight. On Definitely Instagram. chime in, DM us if you yes. don't agree with what we're saying. We love all transactions and communication with the fans or whoever you know. So definitely chime in. So Mo, um, with my picks being out the way, tell me who you got lined up. Who I got lined up? Okay, so to piggyback off you, I'm gonna start with the uh, MVP. My MVP. I was torn between two people, but I ended up picking Jason Tatum. I went with Jason Tatum. Boston made a run to the finals last year. He didn't look too great in the NBA finals. I think the moment was too big for him. But coming out to start this year, I mean, looked like he playing against himself, even with all the tr- um, turmoil that's going on in Boston with their coaches and everything. they still first in the East, first in the NBA, I believe. And that's mostly in part to Jason Tatum. So I got Jason Tatum for MVP. Solid. Um, Merce Improve. I was torn between two people. So the people I went with, I went with De'Aaron Fox out in Sacramento and Lori Markerman out in Utah. Solid. So beginning of the season, if I would have told you Utah and Sacramento would have been in the playoff race, y'all probably would have laughed at me and tried to put some money on that. Now De'Aaron Fox looking like an all-star and Lori Markerman looking like an all-star too. Utah's supposed to be tanking for the number one pick, but they both got their teams in the playoff contention. I think they're going to be there at the end, may, maybe not top six, but definitely in that play-in mix. So I think one of those two guys definitely deserve most improved player. My sixth man of the year. Now, most people get this re- re- reward backwards, like they might get six man and then move on to MVP. This person got MVP already, and I feel like he's going to get six man. He's accepted his role. I'm talking about Russell Westbrook out in L.A. Oh, wow. So a little rage? Yeah, so 
a lot. Russ went through a lot last year. You know, people saying he need to get traded, he need to retire. I think it was a lot of him being in L.A. But this small sample size we got for like the past two weeks, he's been balling back to himself, and most importantly, it looks like he's having fun. Is he leading the league in assists? Um, for bench players, I checked okay. it. Bench players, bench talk. Follow us, bench talk seven <laughs> underscore seven one eight. Understand? You see how that transition? But you know, I got Russell Westbrook right now for my sixth man of the year, uh, rookie of the year. I got Paolo Banchero as well. He's been out for about a week, but um, the numbers he was putting up, um, as the number one pick, target on his back. He's been coming in averaging about eighteen point seven rebounds. Putting on a couple 30-point games. I think he's definitely the future of the NBA, one of the people of the future in the NBA because Paolo's a good dude. I like Paolo. I like his game a lot. Sure. Look out for um, Orlando, too. They're a nice young team. Now, my Eastern Conference and Western Conference champs. Uh, to piggyback off Jason Tatum being MVP, I think he's going to ride that out. I got Boston coming out the East and coming out the West. I got that boy, number 77. In Dallas, Luka Doncic and the oh. Dallas Mavericks. Oh, wow, that's big. Luka, I feel like um, they made a run to the Western Conference Finals last year. <laughs> um, you look at, if I ask somebody on the street to name Dallas starting five, you probably can't. But that's how much faith I got in Luka and Jason Kidd and that staff over there. I think they're going to get it together. And they're going to find they, themselves in the, in the championship, I believe. I believe in Luka. I'm a big fan. Mm. And saying that, the NBA champs. I'm a ride with Boston. They right. they young, but they they um they proven and they tested. I like Boston to um win the NBA championship, barring no injuries, things stay the same. That Tatum and Brown mix, Solid. mix mix with the veteran Al Horford, and you got um Marcus Smart, sleepy pickup, um Malcolm Brogdon to come off the bench, get them stability. When things get a little shaky, you got a solid point guard to yeah, weather, yeah. weather the storm. So I got Boston winning the championship. My sleeper team, that's another um piggyback off my most improved player. I got the Sacramento Kings, man. Mm. Sacramento doing their thing out there. They balling. Shout out to Mike Brown. He got the young boys balling. You got Sabonis out there. Malik Monk, De'Aaron Fox, Caban back together from um, Kentucky. Kevin Herter shooting the shit out the ball right now. They got a nice young mix of players and veterans over there, and I think they're going to definitely be one of the teams in the playoffs. He came, from, he came from Atlanta, right? Yeah, Kevin Herter. Herter, Kevin oh. Herter Red Rocket. That's his oh, okay. name. He's from upstate New York, actually. He was with Trey Young in there. Yeah. All right. So he out there doing his thing in Sacramento. And last, and last but not least, my breakout performer, I got Shea Gilgis Alexander out in OKC. That's OKC. a solid pick. I like that pick. Okay. I, I don't know. I think... Um, that's a good pick. Yeah, so if you watch basketball, if you're into basketball, if you don't know Shea Gilgis Alexander, SGA, number two, if you play FanDuel, Shea is good for 25 and over every night because the boy gets buckets on whoever, whenever, yeah, how he like it or whatever. So Shea, that's my breakout performer. You don't get to see a lot of OKC games, but Shea's Gilgis Alexander. Ty, I'm going to pass it over to you. What okay. You got? Well, you know, that was a great pick. I don't want to steal your pick. I don't want to say, oh, Ty, piggyback and all that. Great minds think alike. It's okay. Yeah. The one thing I will admit, I do agree with you for MVP, Jason Tatum. Okay. Jason Tatum is doing his thing. Like, to see what happened from last year, not only, you know, him and his partner, right, Jalen Rose. I mean, Jalen Rose. Wow. wow. Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose is watching us. You got the first know. name right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Jalen Brown, JB. Jalen Brown's playing ball, too, but I do have – Tatum as the MVP. Okay. Um, most improved player. I'm surprised none of you, neither one of you picked him, but I have to say Tyrese Maxey picked up a lot of slack. I mean, he got his name he got well known last year for con um, contributing to their winning, but this year so far he's been like he's been on a roll. So I gotta say okay. I like him as most improved player. Um, sixth man of the year, I gotta go with Jordan Poole. Solid. The other light skinned boy over there. There's a few of them, but the one that come off that bench, six men of the year, Jordan Poole is nasty. We don't see him in the starting role. We don't see him off the bench. But at this point, we're seeing him get knocked out. <sighs> sorry, I had to do it. I had to do it. I'm sorry. I didn't want to do that. I, I, not on this platform. Well, you can still I didn't play. Talk you can still play that. though. Would you be cool with your man if he snuffed you like that? No, nah, no. Nah, I don't be that cool. I don't know because some people say it's business. Some people <laughs> yeah, do say it's business. It is business. Yeah. I don't I, think I want to slap fives with you and everything. Uh, that's a topic for another day. Right, right, that, right. that whole situation was crazy. Shout out to Jordan Poole. Shout out to Jordan Poole for taking that like a man. But listen, shout out to Draymond. <laughs> <laughs> the bullies you like yeah. bullies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan Poole, six man of the year for me. Um, rookie of the year. Uh, I went somewhere else. Uh, my pick. I got to I say I chose Benedict Matherin. Mm -hmm. That kid right there yeah, is showing yeah. me a little something. Um, 
he's stepping up the ladder. He's moving up the ladder very fast. Um, his coach loves him. I, I can't. Right. I never seen Rick Carlisle speak so highly of a rookie like that, other than Luca. Like Luca, he showed yeah. a lot of love too. But it seems like there's a little friction between him and Luca. But this kid right here, he loves him. I like that. Um, he's put Indiana on the map. Uh, with all the trade talks, they know that they said that the big man wanted to get up out of it. They thought he's going to the Lakers. I know that's, that's your Turner. team. You know, yeah, it's Miles Turner. Yeah, yeah. But um, now they they trying to get things together. I'm not saying they're a great team, but that rookie, he does. Sky's the limit for him, too. I like that pick. Yeah, I, I like Solid. that guy. I like ben. Benedict is doing his thing. We got to show love. Now, like I said, I'm a little biased when it comes to certain picks. So uh, for my defensive player of the year, I got to go with Giannis. Mm. I got to go with Giannis Antetokounmpo. That's my man, the Greek freak. I mean, not only is he dominant on the offensive end, that guy's a defender for real. Like, you try to challenge him. Every mm -hmm. now and then, a few guys get a dunk on him or whatnot. You know, he's been on, he's been on the poster a few times. But overall, he's a great defender. He wins more than he loses as far as defensive matchups. I give him that. I got to show respect, and I pick him as a defensive player. One thing I like about Greek freak is his effort, man. He's a superstar that plays hard. Like, some superstars take games off or manage minutes, but he's out there. You know, like, you know what I like about him? You know what I really like about him? What is it? He has a bodyguard. And that's just his brother. <laughs> yeah. Protect the bread. I understand all that, but I didn't like when I saw him picking his boogers. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> you on the bench. You blow your own nose, you know, man. Yeah, like, come on, man. You don't need me to do that, you know. But, hey, he going to be defensive player of the year. Remember I said it. Ty said it. I really believe that. All right. Um, my East pick, I'm going back with the Bucks, Milwaukee Bucks. Sorry. I think that people are not really paying attention to them as far as making a run back to the finals. Um, they won that one ring, and everybody's just forgetting about them. You know, they're not at full strength neither. You know, Chris Middleton is still out. Uh, once they bring him back, it changed the whole dynamic of that team. Um, but I have them coming out of the East. Um, and, I, of course, in the West, I got the Warriors because I'm, I'm a huge – that's another – you're going to know I'm a huge Steph fan. Yes, after the Knicks, after the New York Knicks, it's Steph Curry. Not, so, the, not the Warriors? Is not the Warriors? Is, I like the Warriors, but uh, I like Steph Curry. That's my guy. <laughs> Steph Curry's my guy. So you already know what it's like seeing, like the other night, when they played the Warriors. I, I was so upset at the Warriors. I was mad at Steph. But anyway, Steph and the Warriors are coming out of the West. And my NBA champs, I got the Warriors again. Okay. I, just, I got them winning, but I hope he get MVP again, <laughs> just because I want Steph to get it again. But, yeah, I got them winning. Um, my sleeper team, I have to say Portland Trailblazers. Um, they started out strong out the gate. Dame went down. Uh, I'm not sure how much longer he's going to be out, but once he comes back, that dynamic is going to be crazy again because Simon's like replacing C.J. McCollum. Yep. Simon's is really stepping his game up. I even see him take a few shots from Dame range. <laughs> hey, I mean, Chauncey got them boys playing out there. <laughs> I'm the million to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? You get a little green light on that with the payment, paycheck. <laughs> But, yeah, I got them as a sleeper team. My breakout performer. Some of you might not agree with me, but uh, I'm going to go with Jalen Brunson from the New York Knicks. Oh, surprise, surprise, surprise. Yeah, surprise, surprise. surprise. Uh. Jalen Brunson. Now, let's keep it real here, all right? Mm. Jalen Brunson made a hell of a run in Dallas during the playoff stretch when Luka was down. He put up some numbers. So, at that point, I feel like nobody really knew him until then. Like, he was a decent play with the backup, but then he showed that he can lead, which he did. Uh, now on the Knicks, same thing with him. He got paid. He got a nice contract. A lot of people don't agree with that. As a Knicks fan, I didn't agree with it either, but I wanted to see if he would earn it. So far, he's earned it. We have 500, 9 and 9, which that should not be neither. But with that being said, this guy, he's not completely a closer, but he's been closing games for the Knicks. And I'm like, you know, he makes the right pass. He makes the right shot. He doesn't take bad shots. He doesn't force anything. He's very controlled. So that is my predictions. And now That's we up, will transition over to our generation debate. Yeah. Now, in the generation debate, we're going to be talking about Luka Dantich. And Larry Bird, Larry Legend. Third quarter, y'all. Third quarter. Yeah, third quarter. We skipping halftime. We came late to the game. Just pay ref fee, so we're going straight to the third quarter. No warm-up. 
And all y'all refs out there that's bad, I'm letting y'all know I'm paying y'all change next year. I ain't giving y'all no more cash. All those bad refs, y'all getting paid in change. Also, too, like this is obviously the biased New York side of the room. They picked the Knicks and the Nets or whatever. But um, basketball games, we're going to be coming out there with the bench talk, you know, supporting, watching, getting out there to the people, too. So look out for us at the games, your local um, games and everything. We're going to be there. But back to the generational debate. Uh, I'm a little bit, I'm a, the middle out of an age out of us. Lavar's the elder statesman, Ty's the youngest. So a lot of times we, we chose these two players, Larry Bird and Luka Doncic, because some people adamant all, oh, you couldn't play in this era, you couldn't play in that era. So people love to say the old era couldn't play now, but the last time I checked, Luka Doncic can't jump over a phone book. I mean, he's not the <laughs> fastest person in the world, and, so he le- and he leads the NBA in scoring. So if you lead the NBA in scoring, you're obviously doing something right at 35 points per game. Dang. So, you know. Mm. Of all you being an elder statesman, I didn't have the privilege of watching Larry Bird live. I watched the clips and stuff like that. So let me ask you, do you think how do you think Larry Bird would play or fare in this era, today's NBA? I think there's certain players that's generational and they will transcend in any era. So you could put Larry Bird in the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies. I don't care what generation you play him in, put him down, he could play. As long as he's got some sneakers, cause he's a killer. Um, when you look at it, like we were talking about the other night, Ty. Like, when you watch these, you know, clips or you watching um, a game from 10, 20 years ago, it's different because um, you see the impact, like, like, seeing the impact and watching the game during that time, it was different. Uh, we spoke about how Magic and uh, Bird saved the NBA. Right. But um, I was a big Laker fan at that time. Loved Magic Johnson, Showtime, Lakers, loved that team. And you couldn't, you if you liked the Lakers, you hated the Celtics and vice versa. <laughs> um, so... But you had to respect, like I said, I'm not a Steph Curry fan, but you have to respect it. There's no way you say you like the sport of basketball and don't like Steph Curry. He's a transitional play. He's a transitional player. Like, he transitioned the game. The way he shoots the ball, like, it changed and revolutionized the game. Larry Bird, 6'9", like you said, can't jump with a phone book, but he's getting you 27 a game, 28 a game, 13 rebounds, 7, 8 assists, and he's gone and he's tough. You're not punking him. And he was the best shit talk in the game. Um, case in point. His man Kevin McHale dropped, what did he drop, 50 mm-hmm. one night? But Bird said, I'm going to top that, top that. He had like 55 the next game. I think he played left-handed too yeah. versus Portland. So talk your shit. Like Larry Bird is one of those players who will kill you, kill you, kill you. So like when I say, well, like, and I like having these generational talks because like you can't speak on, sometimes you can't speak on what you don't know. Right. So you got to do your research, right? But I don't like older guys who also say, that era was the, like, they may feel it's the best era, but don't say that, don't try to shit on this era now because these young boys are special. The game is played differently. So you got to respect, you got to have an open mind. So me, when I'm in a room, I like to listen because I don't know, I don't I don't know it all. I'm not going to act like I know it all, but I like to hear, you know, all sides and then try to make a, 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 a honest I appreciate that. After that. Take a man to admit that they don't know everything either because in these conversations, people just think their way is the way and that's it. So, Ty, I'm going to pass it to you. But I'm going to switch the question around. How do you think Steph Curry would fare in the physical 80s and 90s? Oh, man, that's, that's a tough question. Uh, I think that Steph, I think Steph would have a shortened career. It would be short. Wow. Because the physicality, I'm not saying he can't take hits or nothing like that, but it's different. You know, the way that Steph can, it'll be harder for him to get a shot off. I mean, for him to be as deep as he is shooting the ball from 35 feet out, I mean, you know, he'll probably drop a few. But as far as breaking the defender down, going to the rack, you know, the high floaters that he throw up off the glass or whatnot, they're going to knock him down. And I don't think that he can stand that. How many years he has now? I think he's like 12, 13 in. Steph, one of the older statesmen now. Sounds he's, crazy. He's 34. Steph is an OG in the NBA wow. now. Yeah, yeah. He's, th- he's 34 years old. Um, yeah, I don't think he he will fit in. I, well, not fit in, but I don't think that he, he will have a long career playing back then in the 80s and early 90s. But I um, as far as this debate uh, with Luka and Larry Legend, um, I like both. I, I can't pick a side. Uh, like I said, I, I'm the youngest here, so... Uh, I definitely watch NBA TV, um, Hollywood Classics. Anybody, you you guys know Hollywood Classics. I watch a couple of games, but I like to compare teams, not just the individual talent. Um, come on, everybody knows Boston. Uh, when you think of Boston, like you say, you think of the Lakers, Showtime Lakers, but Boston was a juggernaut. I mean, you you you. it's not just Larry Bird. I mean, you had well, uh, well, Johnson, Dennis Johnson, Kel, uh, Dennis Robert, Robert, Parrish, Parrish, Robert Parrish. Parrish. Like, you, you had some Ainge. players. Danny Ainge, like these guys, it was a, 
it was a great team. Like they had team. And then when you think about Luca, I mean, some people may not agree with it either, but I put Luca in the same conversation, not as far as his accolades so far, not the championships, but like what LeBron went through early in his career. Like when you think about Luca's teammates, his team, he never had a team like Larry Bird. But I also think that Luca is the closest, and I think he'll be the one. He's the one capable of breaking Russell Westbrook's triple double record. I think that he's that player that can do that. That's big shoes to fill to say he could break Russ, what, but what is he? What year is he in? Is he a four or five, if I'm not mistaken? Four or five for yeah. Luca? Yeah. All right, so all right, so is he a four or five for Luca? Westbrook is at what, 180 something, almost 190? I think Luca has what? Luca is, I don't even know the exact number, but Luca is up there. If we can get that, I, I think Luca is up there. Um, they just mentioned um, what's his name, uh, Jokic. Mm-hmm. Jokic had fifty career, something like that, triple doubles. So Jokic and Luca, those are the top two guys I have there. Now Larry Bird, we know he was a killer, he was a trash talker, but when it comes to them two, it's hard because they kind of have the same style of play. I mean, except I mean, Larry Bird just shoot over anybody. Luca, you know, he liked that step back. You know, like you say, he can't jump over a phone book. Neither one of them, but they're killers. That's true. Like this they, is true. I, I think it's just they just equal. I can't. I can't really. I think that Luca is more of a point guard. Mm-hmm. You know, he controls the flow of the game a little more than Larry. Larry was able to get assists to find teammates, but overall, I think they're one and the same. I agree, but just to answer your question, Luca's at fifty currently, and Russ is at one hundred and ninety-four. So he got a long way to go, but it's saying, oh yeah, he got some years ahead of us. So Mo, let me let me ask you a question, right? Because like if we had player A and player B mm-hmm. with no names, right? Um, who would you pick and why? So when it comes to stats, uh, when I like to rate players, I'm kind of a like uh, I don't go specifically off stats. I got to I got to do the eye test and I like longevity. So, you can have great stats for a 2-3 year period and then it's guys who got decent stats for a 15, 16 year period. So, me personally, I will go with the guy who's done it for a longer period of time, but if we're going over just like say one season and play A if it's comparable or whatever, I I mean not knowing, I might go with the guy with the better stats, mm-hmm. but if I watch the game, I I could give you a better Answer off that. And now, um, to go further with that, a lot of people just look at stats. You'll ask somebody who's better. And like, oh, he averages this, that, and the third. And you'll think that makes him a better player, which is totally not the case. And um, I'll give you an example. Somebody like Draymond Green, who I'm not a fan of at all. Um, <laughs> of course not. <laughs> he's a, um, if you ask me, is Draymond Green good, I would tell you no, and twice on Sunday, no. But the Golden State Warriors have four championships, and I don't think they will have one if he wasn't on that team. Mm. So that, as great as Steph Curry is, top ten player all the time, without Draymond Green, without his culture, what he brings to the team, him being allowing everybody else to play their role, I don't think Golden State will have a championship, not three, four, two, a. And I'll stand on that. And then you could have somebody like James Harden. I was having a conversation with my friend Sharif. Shout out to my friend Sharif. Ain't on. He loves James Harden. He tells me, oh, Harden averaged a triple-double. He's a walking 60. Playoffs come, he's nowhere to be found. So all of that, to do that in the playoffs and not have anything to show for it, everybody can't win a championship, I understand. But you got to maintain that same level of play. You shouldn't go down. So, so you're heavy on impact. Impact. If you're not doing it when it counts, I can't rock with you. I like that. I like that. And like I said, I, I like what you said about Draymond. Like His stats aren't the best, but... He's the glue to that team. He makes them go. So, yeah, something something to think about. So, I, I know that that'll be another question for another time on another show. Um, we'll talk about is Draymond Green a Hall of Famer. But that's that's for another day, Ooh. another time. Ooh. Yeah, we got a lot for y'all, man. Wow. Uh, whatever y'all think, too. Like Hall I said, follow the page, Bench Talk underscore 718. Give us your questions, what you want us to say on the show, if you want to be on the show. And um, speaking about being on the show, um, I have a friend. Try to reach out to him, see if he picks up. You know, let me shout him out real quick. Just give us a second. Like I said, once again, follow the page, Bench Talk 718. And, shout and out. this is the fourth quarter. We transition into the fourth quarter, y'all. Yeah, it's crunch time. Shout Almost. out to Ty, man. If you, if, when you, if you follow that Bench Talk page, Ty is the architect of that page, man. So just follow us. We, have, we post questions up there. We post Bench Talk Player of the Day. 
And it's just like if you if you don't watch ESPN and you scrolling through Instagram, and you want to find out what happened in the league. Tune in to Bench Talk, man, because you're gonna find out who did what. You're gonna get stats. You're gonna get your daily updates. But it's not just NBA. We're gonna be live. We're gonna be also talking about the high school season. That's gonna be a show. We're gonna have a high school preview because this this year, you know, you got some diaper dandies with this freshman class, this 2026 class special coming in. Um, New York City is getting back on the map, so that's gonna be a show. We're going to ask, we're going to pose questions. And I, we also said, we're coming live to your hood. We're going to be on your bench asking you about who's the nicest, what's going on, who raps, the clothes, everything. We want to find out what's going on in your hood. And we're coming to every hood out there and showing love, man. That's what the show is all about. Follow us, Bench Talk underscore 718. Just like Vaughn just said, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Stay tuned. Pay attention. You have to follow the page to find out what's next because we need your interaction. We Absolutely. need to know what's next. Some questions that y'all want us to answer for the live call-ins, everything. This is what we're all about, and we're here to show love. And maybe one day you want to get on the bench with us. Absolutely. Come so, join us. So. We can get on the bench, interview you, get some questions that you want to ask us. We can ask you some. And we move from there, y'all. If you come on here saying some bullshit, you ask us, you're going to get benched. Yeah. Come here. Don't come here on no bullshit. Come, we got come right extra man. seats. You just see us three right here, but we got a whole bench lined up for you. A whole bench. So um, the call didn't go through. A person probably don't got no service. But what we were going to ask, I'll, um, I'll ask you, Ty, the question I had for our caller, but I'm going to give it to you. Dwight Howard, 19-year guy, currently playing in Taiwan. Played the game, had about 38 points, 15 rebounds, 8 assists. Does Dwight Howard belong in the NBA today? Of course. Um, hands down. He he belongs in the NBA. Uh, this bothers me. You would think that he's a family member of mine because <laughs> I don't understand why he's not in the league. I mean, this guy, over his career, throughout his career, 15 points, 11 rebounds. That don't jump out at you, but this guy used to be a walk in 2020, 2015, especially in Orlando. You know, um, won a championship with the Lakers, the bubble season, you know, a lot of people don't respect the bubble ring, but he got it, and he he deserved one. Um, this is like the same thing that happened with Melo uh, a few years ago. Like guys that belong in the league, they don't have in the league. This guy went across seas, and and it, you know, some guys they'll call him a bum or whatnot. He can't shoot free throws, this and that. This guy's shooting step back jump shots in Taiwan, shooting threes, getting assists, all these things. Now we do know that everyone in NBA was one of the greats from wherever they're from. Like, some people act like they forget that. Even guys like Patrick Beverly. Like, people don't like him. They call him a bum, but he was nice where he came from. At some point in time, everybody in the NBA was the best player on their team somewhere, high school, college, somewhere they were the best at one point in time. Hands down. Just because we didn't see them at that point, they're following a role that they're given. Uh, with Dwight, he voiced where he wanted to go. He said he was willing to go back to the Lakers. They didn't give him a contract. He said he was willing to join the Warriors, like DeMarcus Cousins did a few years ago, just to get in the league. They didn't give him a contract. So um, Dwight is better than half of the centers in the league. When you think about the centers in the league, there's not many that pop out. You won't even, outside of the star players that are centers, who, who's the names that come up? I mean, I think the game has transitioned where – um, we don't have back to the basket centers anymore, so Dwight Howard might be the last or one of the last Mohicans of that of that type of ball. So now everything is five and out, pick and pop. If you can't guard the pick and roll, then what's what's your you know what good are you? But um, Dwight Howard is a Hall of Famer. He's an Olympian. Um, you have guys like and you. One of you guys said that you have like Val McGee in the league. You have Stephen Adams in the league. These guys are rebounders, bruisers. They do their role, but. I feel like Dwight Howard should retire in the NBA jersey and, and shouldn't have to. Not to say it's a smack in the face because there's a lot of guys, a lot of a lot of a lot of my close personal friends who may lucrative have lucrative lucrative contract, you know, careers overseas. But I feel like, in, in regarding Dwight Howard, he should finish his career with an NBA jersey on. I agree, but let me play devil advocate to piggyback off your player A, player B converse um, conversation. So if I said player A has been all NBA numerous times, four time defensive player of the year, NBA champion. Um, should that player be in the NBA? You're gonna say, of course. Right. But also now this is the White Howard. So like we said, the NBA we transition to the way the game is played. We're shooting fifty threes a night. If I put him in a pick and roll, can't guard anybody, you're gonna foul out. So as a general manager or a team president, do I wanna pay this guy two, three million dollars to take up a roster spot because of your cachet, so to speak? Can you play in the NBA? Yes. 
Does your style of play fit my team is the question. Are you willing to come in and play a role? And like you said with Carmelo, when he was out the league, before he got back in, he took coming off the bench as an so He said, hey, yo, they talk about they want me to come off the bench. Yeah, right. Mel- yeah, Melo, you got to come off the bench. Yeah, Dwight Howard, you might play four minutes or you might not play for 10 games. And I think because of who these guys are, top 75 players, Dwight should have made that list, by the way. Um, mm. I think you get to a point in your career where your skill set doesn't match your name, and that's where he's at right now. And I think it's just a shock. This is probably the first time in his life that he's been told no as a basketball player. You've been the best basketball player since you're 12 years old and you're getting close to 40. And that's reality setting in. So does he belong in the NBA? Yes. Where? I can't answer that. But one thing I want to say here at Bench Talk 718, we're going to keep it real, right? So just got to keep it real. Dwight Howard got himself out the league. When he got hurt, which he had the right to be hurt, that he didn't make that all-time 75 list, they made sure he didn't get in the league. He couldn't get a job, which I don't understand because even in today's game, obviously the regular season, people put up their numbers. It doesn't matter. But when it slows down in the playoffs, when you got to get the best out of seven, you think about what they've been doing lately in the last couple of years, automatically you know, the, the point guard acts for the pick and roll to get the center on the mismatch, clear it out. Let me kill his center. Dwight is one of the very few centers that could somewhat stay with them. Mm-hmm. You know, if you got a person like Steph Curry, Dame Lillard, those type of guys, caliber players that can shoot from all the way out there, he doesn't want to press up on them, but they'll blow past him. He has to defend on his he has to depend on his teammates. But overall, them trying to run away from them, blow past them, I, we seen Dwight chase those guys down like, no, you're not going to do that, or make a good block or a good um, contest on a, on a step-back jump shot or whatnot. So the guy can still play the game. Yeah, the game evolved or whatnot, but I truly believe he's not in the league because he has so much to say about the NBA's decision on the great 75 players. I also think that's a good point, Ty. Um, who's the day? Like, who's the day that decides who doesn't get into the league, right? And I think that's another mm. you know, that's another topic we could, we could discuss. But... um. I feel as the way the game is played now is too much pick and pop. Like, even if you watch youth basketball, it's a fast break. We were taught to run to the basket of the layup. These kids run at three-point spots, you know? So, if I have a coach and I have a guy like Dwight Howard, I'll have him rolling to the basket trying to get dunks while he's in the game instead of rolling out to a three-point line for a jump shot. Like, I don't want to watch everybody shoot jump shots all game. So, that's my old-school part kicking in. That's the Steph Curry effect also. These kids watch basketball. If, you, if you're 10 years old, you've been watching basketball for the past 10 years, you've seen Steph Curry right. win four championships, two MVPs, shooting from half court. So, everybody, we can't – everybody can't dunk. I don't want to speak for everybody. Everybody can't dunk. That's or, or just, you know, play above the rim. But everybody can go grab a basketball and throw it or shoot it. So, Steph Curry gives people – I want to say who can't play or do certain things, mm-hmm. the physical attribute. Steph Curry looks like one of the guys walking down the street mm-hmm. as opposed to a mutant like Dwight Howard. So it's more of a relatable to Steph and like, oh, I could do that. I can get a basketball and shoot as opposed to breaking a backboard or getting 20 rebounds. So that's true. That's another thing too. Steph, Steph gets the blame all the time for that. I mean, it's crazy because Steph was born in the game, right? He surpassed his father as far as stardom, championships, whatnot. He always gives respect. Just shout out to his brother, also Seth Curry, which nobody talks about. I like Seth also. Um, but Steph been shooting on NBA rims since he was about eight or nine. And I mean shooting three-pointers. Him and his brother having three-point shootouts with Vince Carter. Like, that's something that they talked about as well. But I, I feel like you cannot blame Steph. A lot of people blame him, but just because he's doing it, that don't mean the kids have to go out there and do that. I think that, like, for example, Michael Jordan in that era, when he was jumping all over the place, come fly with me, the, his, 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 his hang time, all that good stuff, kids couldn't do that because they're not tall enough to, to jump off one foot and do that or jump off two feet like Dominique. But people look at Steph and the kids go, wait, wait a minute, he's shooting, so I can shoot too. But he, he gets the bucket of blame for that. But you have to know how to shoot. You, I mean, like LeVar said, you're from the old school but that's a bad play, right? But the oohs and ahs, some people play for that. But then if you miss, I'll see Steph Curry is the reason why the game is messed up because these kids think they can do that, and he's the reason why. He take all those bad shots. But majority of the shots like that, he makes. So what's the excuse for the other kids? If we're going to go by old school rules, because I was coached by an old school coach, we take a shot like that, sub, you're on the bench. Mm-hmm. Bench talk, underscore 718 on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, we're on the bench. 
So some of these coaches are allowing it. They, they might yell at them, hey, come on, what are you doing? And then two possessions later, they're taking that same shot. So how are we teaching them? That plays a part too. You have to let them know that's not okay. Youth but. basketball, whole another day, whole another topic. Yeah. So much to cover, so much time. We're Leave Steph here. alone. We're going to be here. Once again, follow us. We could continue these conversations at Bench Talk underscore 718. Our personal page, Mobama, Vu Folk, Ty Rich 90. You know, appreciate everybody tapping in with us or whatever, giving back to y'all. Appreciate y'all interaction. And um, if you guys out there following us, you want to pose a question, please go on the page, pose your question, and we'll definitely have you up here. And we'll definitely, definitely, you know, let you guys know. Um, the feedback is important. We want to know, like I said, is the bench, is a part of the culture. It's important to know what's important to you. Um, the basketball, like, and we're not, we're going to stay primarily around sports, but we're also going to tiptoe around other topics as well. Um, with that being said, my guy, you know, Kyrie Irving, big topic of discussion um, about how, you know, the statement he was made, how the NBA handled it, you know, so that, that'll be something that we'll come up with in one of our future shows. But um, the floor is ours. We're here. This is our platform to let you guys know that we care about you, and we're coming from you. know, we're coming with an urban feel. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be real mixed. We're gonna switch it up. We're gonna have trivia. We're gonna do guests. We're gonna be out there. Merch, and- merch, merch. You like these shirts? It's getting <laughs> cold. We're gonna have some hats, some jackets, everything. Young Nation, if you want some merch. That's who does our thing for us. We have Young Nation. Shout out to Young Nation. Melita, you already know his love, fam. That's Young Nation. On Instagram, young.nation19. Make sure you follow her. If you want some merch, Young Nation is a part of the team, y'all. Also coming up, we will have... <clears throat> excuse me. Also coming up, we will have a launch party where you can interact with us. We'll do a live tape, and you can also purchase your merch there. So we'll let you guys know the location of the launch party. Just come out and support um, we're not asking you. You don't have to buy anything, but just show some, some show some support. Whether you're there, whether you're watching, that's all we ask, man. I agree. Shout out to S Street Media again for giving us this platform. Like Voss said, <laughs> Lenny, we had this conversation in a bar at the table on the bench, but to be here with the lights on and the camera, it was a little nerve wracking. I played basketball in front of a bunch of people in neighborhoods where I had to get chased out and stuff. But <laughs> this is like this is like a like a good nervous feeling. I had butterflies, but my bros held it down. Good um good advice. My man mathematics on the board. Everything is just flowing beautifully for our first show. And this is the first of many. Also I wanna if we didn't do it already, I know I didn't. I want to get my sports biases out. So if y'all watch and y'all hear something you might not agree with, I am an unapologetic LeBron James fan. I'm going to repeat, unapologetic. Um, I don't want to be lazy and do the Mike and LeBron thing because that's a whole, that might be a four-hour episode or whatever. But but if y'all want it, let us know. DM yeah. us, follow us, Bench Talk underscore 718. Yes, let sir. us know you want that debate because we can have it. So I'm an unapologetic LeBron James fan. Um yeah, Braun, Braun, Braun. That's me. So I mess with Braun. So wherever anyway. LeBron goes, he goes. He doesn't have a team. If LeBron's in the PAL, I'm on the, the PAL. Is my <laughs> I side with LeBron's in LA. I got I got beef with y'all Lakers fans. I don't know what it is. Y'all alliance to Kobe or what? R.I.P. Kobe, Mom Black Mamba. But he on the team, man. Just hold it down. He one of y'all now. You know what I'm saying? But that's my guy. So I, my alliance is Braun. That's one of my biases. Remember once again. Follow us, Bench Talk underscore 718. Follow S Street Media, YouTube channel, also Instagram, S Street Media. Show them some love. Thank you for the platform, S Street Media. We appreciate that. Once again, you got our personal Instagram pages, but the most important one is Bench Talk yes, underscore 718. Yes, sir. Shout out to Math, man. Shout out to O, man. We appreciate y'all, man. Like we said, we don't have friends, we have family. And we don't fuck with everybody, so we fucking with you know we're in the right place, man. And we great, you know, we're grateful to do business with y'all. We're gonna keep this thing going, and we're just gonna grow from here, man. Until next time, y'all. Peace. Peace. Put that on, man.